Hey everybody, I'm Tektos and welcome to the start of a new series of Endless Legend, or rather Let's Play Endless Legend, where we will finally be able to play on a reasonable difficulty setting. Because the last playthrough as the Art Mages, it was fun, it was kind of a learning experience, but man, the game on normal is just too easy at the moment. The AI is... it's just stupid. And you don't realize it, that's the bad thing. Like, you start the game and um, the first couple turns you just... You know, you have the, the same amount of points as the AI, and you think, oh, we're, we're doing kind of even. And then you start to fight them, and you just steamroll everybody, and you're wondering, huh, am I that awesome? No, you aren't. The AI is just really bad at picking fights and um, assembling their armies. So I decided to increase the difficulty, and as you can see from the, see from the highlighting, rather, I played around with Impossible, and so far I didn't finish a game. And I fell behind in the games pretty heavily, but I could hold my own in battles. So I assume I can win if I don't make too many mistakes. So that's the difficulty I want to pick. Because um, contrary to last time, now I actually know what the fuck I'm doing while playing. So that's good. And uh, I want to have it challenging in a sense that it's really possible to lose. Because uh, that's the most fun. I mean... Why play if you know you will win anyway? It's not SimCity where you like to build a real big city and you have it all connected and mapped out and, and optimized. No. This is just a plain 4x strategy game and you want to have a challenging environment in which your strategy will make you succeed. So Impossible is going to provide that challenge. Now, I picked the Necrophages as the race because my favorite race in Endless Space was the Cravers. And the Necrophages are pretty obviously their predecessors. So well, that's a good reason to pick them for one. The other good reason I feel for me is that they have the ability to build one district per population. So you can really build huge cities. And that's what I really like. I don't enjoy the, the big empire part of the game so much. Like if you when you have over ten provinces it gets really tedious to manage all the production queues and to have all the cities optimized and every turn move around your population. I'd much rather have a couple of really tall, really strong cities and the rest of my people, well, they can just live in hunger and despair, right? Who cares? And Necrophages allow me to do that, so that's good. Now, it's just a question of color and I think for the Necrophages a dark green is probably what we want to go with, right? Because they're insects, and insects are green. Is that the logic here? I don't even know. Um, but for viewing pleasures, probably orange is better, because you can easily see it on the map. And that's probably good. Now, I'm going to handpick all the factions, because for one, I don't want to have the wild walkers in there, because I don't, I don't know if it's fixed in the patch, but they are crazy when you play against them. And they're crazy good in that. They will just... There's just no way you can catch them. It's maybe some... People out there know how to do it, but I've had my ass handed to me in a bad way by the Wild Walkers. They just, their early production bonus combined with the impossible bonus, it's just crazy. So I don't, I don't want to ma make it unfair difficult, so I'm not going to pick the Wild Walkers. Um, and the other races, I don't want to have, like I want to have everybody in the game. So of course the Broken Lords will be in it. And of course being Lords, they have to be blue. Um, we do need uh, the Walters, maybe. Like, how many races can we get? We have one, two, three, four. Yeah, it should be good. We could also leave out the Cultists, because they... Or do we? No, oh, let's, 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 let's get the Walters. They can be dark green, that's fine. Um, Rowing Clans. Oh, they're interesting. I don't know if the AI finally figured out how to play them. We'll make him gay anyway, cause, uh, pink, I mean, because they can't declare wars, right? So pink is just fine for that kind of playstyle. Draken, obviously. They're also a little bit... Um, a little bit of a problem <laughs> on Impossible. Because uh, they're not diplomatic at all. They will just try and mess you up. Like, I've had a couple games where the Draken were my neighbors, and man... They don't mess around. Like once they detect weakness, they just push you, push you hard. 
probably do the cultists as well. Just like them, their their art style, and and I especially enjoy taking their city, because <laughs> uh, it's usually a pretty good city, so that's good to take. But I'm not sure. Like the art mages are also really strong. Hmm. Cultists or art mages? I don't know. Can't really decide. Like I feel the cultists are not really. They, I can't play them well, right? Ah, what the hell, maybe it's fixed. We'll try. Because they're just good to have in the game for diversity, I feel. Cultists and Ruin Clans. They're so unique that I like to have them. And that should do it. Like, I didn't change much about the world. I think I just put the, um, the land percentage to 70%, so you can actually have, um, have some sea that you have to travel. Also, the uh, custom shape. I don't like to pick it it's just i like it random so you don't know what to expect and it's a little more challenging in that sense and yeah all the rest i'll leave on normal i think that's fine don't put any seed values obviously and that should do it that's the setup for the start of the new series and i've been talking for five minutes already so uh, <laughs> let's just hit that start button now it's gonna give me a little more time to talk because the first start of the game it takes quite a while to create the world so let's just enjoy that in silence shall we <laughs> no uh, so the um, the necrophages they have a pretty hard start I would say I mean it's not even start it's just a very early game uh, they What's finished already? No. Um, it's just a very early game where they really suffer from their um, their food production malice. Like you don't, you get minus one food on all food tiles. Oh. The coward is everything. I'll shut up now. They were born as one. They fought as one. And they died as one. Driven by their hunger. But I hunted for something more. <laughs> I stole the sentience of an ancient power and saw a greater purpose. For we were the first. Origa is our planet. And I will turn our hunger against those trespassers who would take it from us. One day we will reign supreme on Origa. And we will gaze up at the stars. Still hungry. Yep. You will. Okay, so the Draken, they see everybody at the game start, so of course they're gonna say hi. That's fine. Ooh, look at that sexy hero. <laughs> so, uh, what I was about to say is that the... Um, the Necrophages have a pretty tough start in the sense that they don't get enough food to grow quickly. And their early game units, like those uh, foragers, they're not strong. Really not strong. So you do need the um, the Necro Drones, who are really, really good units. I don't know if they've been patched, because we're in version 1.012 right now. I've been playing 1.07, I think, or 6? Not really sure. Um, anyway, they are pretty strong. But the real Necro Phage game begins once you get uh, this guy, the Proliferator. Because his skill, the Paratism... Parasitism? Parasitism, come on! Focus! The uh, Parasitism allows you to turn killed enemy units that he had hit once or uh, spewed his par parasites on to... Uh, what's, what's their face again? To foragers. So basically every unit you kill that has been shot at by this guy will be a forager after the fight. It doesn't even matter if you win or lose the fight. You always get a troop of foragers. And that makes your army unfucking stoppable if you get it going once. So you, you just need a couple of your Necro Drones to uh, deal the damage. And then you just have an indefinite meat shield. Like, they just keep... just keep uh, keep coming. And you don't need many of those proliferators. It's just one or two. Maybe one with each army. That's more than enough to uh, really wreck some havoc. Only the Draken are a little bit of a problem, because they have so much health, it's gonna get tough. And the um, Foragers, they don't deal much damage, like you can see here. They have high initiative, which is pretty good, because that allows you to um, 
choose the melee fights you want and really the foragers are just the ones who will engage in melee so your necrodones can swoop in and do the damage but more on that later when we actually get to fighting for now it's about picking a colony Ooh, and this spot right here actually doesn't look too bad but I'm gonna do my due diligence and scout around so you can see up here is the border of this region already so we do need to um, get to know what's down here and down here a little more so let's pick the first forager and take a step here Ooh, I like the look of that one movement two movement no move a little further here oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Ooh, baby that looks like a really decent starting location again only problem being problem problem being the food because <laughs> we uh, get minus one on each tile and it's already factored in like usually here it would be one food two science one production but we get minus one food so it's zero so uh, that's good okay so let's look in the other direction just to be no I don't wanna the only problem here is those temple ruins like I don't care much for them in the way of my city and up here is the coast okay so maybe one step down okay so we can basically see almost the entire region so now it's a question where do we wanna settle um, if we zoom out a little bit okay we got only got titanium in here but that's okay that is okay um, problem is that we don't wait isn't that oh it's just a anomaly I thought it's the Delvers village and uh, I was wondering why I can't see it so um, on these ruins you can't build districts so I do need a city that I can um, grow as a line not as a triangle <clears throat> so that has to be factored in but um, outside of that ooh, it's actually not that easy I do love the extra like right where we stand is a pretty good location you just don't have enough food well, we got a lot of science and production, and science is really at the start really important for the necrophages because you need to get to your um, proliferator tech and you need to get the food enhancement going ASAP. Once you got a little base tech, then it's okay, it's not as important anymore, but at the start it's really important. But also, food is important. So maybe this spot here is good as well. I think even though it seems a little counterintuitive but I think if we pick this spot here we got a decent anomaly do you provide yeah and this guy here provides happiness and so we can actually just grow the city in this direction just as a line straight down here and towards the coast or do I wanna do that Yeah, we could also go over here and go for the triangle build. But I feel like as the necrophages you can grow your city so fast and so tall. It doesn't really make sense to limit your options, so... Ah, I wish I could be close to that. But then again, you don't get food in this region, like none at all. It's just <laughs> everywhere zero. So um, maybe not. So really our best bet probably is this tile here and then our first expansion is going to be up here to get the 8 science and 3 production and then just grow down, you know, just spread out. And we can have 1, 2, 3. So in 4 districts we can get this earth tower in range and that should make our city so happy and productive that we should be settled quite nicely. So let's do that 
Um, yeah, let's do that. Go here, <clears throat> and there we go. Oh, and we do have Delvers in here. <laughs> That's nice. Plus 5% dust per pacified Delver village. Okay. Okay, where are they? Okay, probably up in this region here. That is fine. So we can... I can turn off the fizzy values now. And expand the menus. And we can already build a district. Like we could already go up here. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. It's really nice. <laughs> and so, I do need the Founder's Memorial. We don't have that much production in this area, but we got quite quite a bit of dust going. And I do need to pick some research projects. Now, what do you need? For um, for starters, I need to boost my basic fit output. Um, so the obvious choice is mill foundry. There's just I feel like it's always the best pick because you do need that extra production. Uh, six. Oh, they changed it. They patched it down a little. So you get plus six now. Uh, used to be plus ten, I think. <clears throat> is it the same? No, public library is still the same. Impairment is also reduced. No, it was also plus five. I see, I see. Oh, and they improved the... No, they didn't. Okay, so everything else basically stayed the same. Yep. Everything else stayed the same. Okay. So, um... But still, even if it's just, in parentheses, just plus six, Still, you need that base production, because right now, plus 6, is going to be a 100% increase, right? It's basically like having one population in here, and you also get the 15%, and you do need production at the start of the game. So, to uh, for everything. Like, you need the base buildings, you need armies, you need... You just need production. So that, it's always the best first pick, I feel. So, um, after that, let's actually take a look at the city. Now, we got six tiles that put out science. So we could gain 12 science with the geomic labs and uh, sometimes you might think that's better than the public labor library but even if we can get 14 science it's not better because we get the 10% bonus with the public library. So we do definitely need that. Question becomes now um, do we go for the seed storage which will boost our food output or go for the library first. And I think growing at the start of the game is more important than the teching, even though I made a long speech about how important tech for the necrophages is. But still, you, we do need the population, we do need the production capabilities to be able to utilize the tech we research. So I feel the um, seed storage is going to be the logical next pick. Now, the necrophages don't mess around with the parlaying with the villages, so you don't get that, I don't even know what it's called, that speech tag that lets you get quests from villages. Yeah, we don't fuck around with that, we just kill stuff. So we don't have that tech, we don't need it, no thought there. So, um, third one, obviously gonna be the public library. And from there I'm gonna actually adjust a little bit it depends on how dust-starved I am. Maybe we're gonna go for the empowerment early. Hopefully we don't have to and I can go for the geomic labs right away. That would be lovely. But we'll see. So we got four turns to uh, finish the mill foundry. And yeah, in terms of production this is really uh, like a not so good start. But it's just I, I had to grab the food and I had to no, I didn't have to actually. I could have settled here. Maybe that was the better... No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Because <laughs> uh, now we do have some food. At least we, we have some, right? So if we didn't settle here, we wouldn't have any food. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So let's get moving. I want to find some... Well, first search those ruins and get a little dust going. 
and I want to find uh, the first Delver village and maybe we can actually get our first kill in. That would be lovely indeed. So, uh, there we go. That looks like a terrorist. Or did we meet? Is that the Delver's village? We've yeah, I think it is. So we didn't actually... Let's just check it out here. Yeah, we don't know the faction that is in this region yet. So it has to be hiding up here somewhere. Or... Yeah, there's no other spot that I didn't see, so... Has to be up here. And I'm curious what, what that is. And uh, we are pretty much done for the turn, I'd say. We got the Founder's Memorial. Could go for the Titanium, but... Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Um, I do need my people on production, because... Uh, five turns to... Yeah. You just need that basic output improvement ASAP. And it's not that expensive. I probably will buy it out. So there we go. First turn over. <laughs> Finally. Oh, I'm loving playing on Impossible already. And there we go. And blah, blah, blah. There's some text. I'm not going to read it. But um, basically we need an exclusive necrophage army and win three battles. So even the, the main storyline uh, requires some ass kicking, which is nice. What the hell is that? We, we don't have any? How's that possible? It looks like we don't have any um, minor faction in this region. That can't be true. What the hell is that? Oh, we find the Kasanji. And they are up here. Uh, they are not the best to uh, to fight with a couple of foragers. Because those demons, they can... They can put on the hurt. But, we're gonna try anyway. And just meet up here. Can everybody make it here? Uh, you need two turns. Um, so he needs two turns to come here. Two turns to come here. Okay, okay, okay. But we do have the dust to almost buy out this. One more turn. And then we can buy it. I wonder if I should save the dust to be able to buy out the mill foundry. But I don't think so. Let's get a move on. Now this region is pr pretty good in terms of Fidzi output. Not so good in terms of... Like we don't have any resources. We just got the titanium and that's it. I would uh, love to get a region with a spice or um, similar food booster. But it uh, doesn't look like it's meant to be. Okay. Um, how much you costing now? 105. That's cute. Still gonna... Because we can't do anything else. So I'm still gonna invest two turns in um, producing that Founder's Memorial. Because I don't want to start the Burrow Streets right away. I want to start them after the Mill Foundry. So why waste the money? We can just save up a little more and uh, go for that go for that mill foundry. <clears throat> okay, so let's group up here. There we go. Come on. There we go. And try and take on those Cassandra. Now it's a little risky, I know, but the feed on bones, or just rather the necrophage heroes, they're pretty good at melee combat. And uh, the foragers, they're kind of expendable. Like, I don't mind losing a couple of them. Uh, especially don't mind losing units anyway, because we will get the food stockpiles for that. Like, here's our cadaver content. <laughs> so the more kills we make, uh, even if it's our own units, the more this counter will fill up, and the more we will get stockpiles of food that we can then use to grow our cities, obviously. So one more turn, yeah, one more turn. 
and then we can buy that and um, let's go for the Kasanji attack ooh they're a little stronger than we are but uh, that should be okay I'm gonna put my people on hold position of course because I uh, don't want them to use their own fucked up intelligence uh, now this is a little bit of a problem where's their second demon by the way yeah this is a problem because they uh, like if I put my hero there how strong are you actually 38 174 28 defense 29 so it's stronger than my hero um, the problem I'm having though is we can only attack him with one unit <laughs> and uh, that's not good I want to utilize my my uh, my units but I can't because he's boxed in in this little region here so how do we actually deal with that now he can if I leave him like that he probably will move out here and attack this forager unit which will then allow me to move in with my hero and at least attack him with two units now that is uh, it's not that much better if we can get him here that will of course allow me to attack him with three units but it also means he gets the high ground advantage and I also don't like that so I guess this is the best tactic and I'm gonna detach this unit so he doesn't get hit by chain lightning actually I'm gonna put him here so we can switch it out for those guys here so they can uh, soak up one attack and then we will just switch out so at least we distribute the damage a little bit and uh, hopefully that will work out not really sure if it does but we'll see and obviously gonna attack here and have this guy stationed here I wonder where their second unit is is it only one demon don't do a critical attack oh yeah that's a good start that's the way you do it yeah that's the way so we don't even have to uh, Oh shit. <laughs> okay, there's their second unit. So we're gonna leave it like that and just go for the second round. Ah, but then again they can fly, so uh, let's just move you here. And now they're infected with a disease ability. That means they will take damage every turn. And isn't that just lovely? And they're almost dead. And this guy obviously can't they move over water? Like they're flyers, right? Fly. Can fly over ridges and cliffs. Ignores the line of sight. So he can't travel over water. Well, well, well. <laughs> okay. I'm liking that fight already. Like we have a really good position on that. And uh, obviously people are pretty good at blocking. And there we go one dead demon so I can stick to my plan just move my guy over here again and swap him out later uh, whoop I hit you and hit you so he won't even take too many losses I don't think and he's attacking my hero that's perfect like he can he can tank uh, that demon easily so there we go like the uh, the stats at the start of the fight they said we we are um, as a, at a disadvantage and probably if I let the AI fight I'm gonna lose at least one unit if not the entire fight so that's why I need to uh, fight the battles myself and we will do a lot of that with the necrophages actually because it's so important to distribute the hits with your um, proliferator just vitally important uh, to do that and there we go we pacify the village the necrophage way yo so uh, <laughs> there we go two dead demons one level up hero inspect
now I'm probably gonna make him the governor of our first city because necrophage hero heroes plural um, are besides the cultists pretty amazing for city governors because they do offset your food problems like we will get plus eight food and um, we can get cost reduction and there's another really awesome one like we get the percentage based food bonus where's the other one what's that weird complicated did they change that why can't I go straight for the huh okay so they did change that a little bit but I still think I want to have him as city governor because we just desperately need food. It's so good as the necrophages to have bigger cities because again you can build a district per population you have so the more population you got the stronger you will be and that's true of course for all races I know that but uh, it's so much more true for the necrophages. And there we go, they're pacified now. At least should be. Um, yeah. So that probably will do it for the first episode, I think. Let's take a look around. So we got lands over here. We got some ice lands over here. I'm not really sure if they are too helpful for us. Probably not that helpful. So maybe we'll go down here first and explore those ruins. But we'll get to that in the next episode and um, build our mill foundry and get this empire rolling right. So if you enjoy what you saw, please leave a like, especially on the first episode of a series. It really helps out because uh, likes and watch time will help me be get find get found in YouTube search. So uh, if you enjoy that and if you want to see more. I would appreciate a like. You can stop that on the second episode and the third one, but the first one, remember, very important. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course it helps, but if you're too lazy to do that, it's fine. I do that myself. Like Now I'm doing YouTube videos myself and I still oftentimes am too lazy to put the like. It's just... people just are lazy. Uh, there we go. That demons. So anyway, that does it for the first episode. I hope you enjoy what you saw. Uh, also, if you got some criticism or some strategy advice or uh, whatever input towards the gameplay, I would love to learn that. Since the forum are, forums are not that active right now for, for the game, so hopefully you can get some discussion in the comments. And outside of that, just have a wonderful day and see you in the next episode. Goodbye.